Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian Hussar and I talk about basically all my passions on this channel. I talk about the Beatles, I talk about music, I talk about movies, and occasionally physical media or preach about physical media and the importance of it. If you like any of those things and if you like any of those combination of things, please hit that subscribe button. And I've never said this before. Smash that bell notification. <laughs> so so go ahead and do that. Um, today I'm going to talk about a new Blu-ray release or 4K UHD Blu-ray release from Kino Lorber Studio Classics. It is the new edition of Sergio Leone's masterpiece, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Uh, if you've not seen this film, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop this video right now. Go out and watch one of the greatest films, one of the greatest westerns ever made by an Italian filmmaker on location in Spain and at Cinecittà Studios in Rome, okay? But that's neither here nor there. It is a great film. In fact, I think Sergio Leone was one of the directors of the Italian western or the spaghetti western that really transcended the genre. Because he made a star of Clint Eastwood. And then Hollywood came a calling and gave him a lot of money for Once Upon a Time in the West. And he followed that up with Duck You Sucker, which is his title, but in America became known as A Fistful of Dynamite. God, I hate that title. But that's one of my favorite films. And of course, the, the grand finale, Once Upon a Time in America. But The Good and the Bad and the Ugly is a masterpiece. Now, in recent years for Blu-ray, uh, there have been some pretty questionable transfers of this film. You had a box set that came out from MGM UA. I believe it was called the Man With No Name Trilogy. I have it. And it was the first 4K transfer of The Good and the Bad and the Ugly. The transfer was supervised in Italy. Uh, so, uh, I forgot who the color timer was, but if anybody has that set, it has a strange-looking yellow tint over the whole film. An ugly looking yellow tint. I never minded it uh, that much but I questioned it and supposedly the color timer was the original color timer of the film in Italy and he said that was how Sergio had wanted it. Of course people who were alive at the time and saw the original negative said no there was never a yellow tint on this thing. So then, Kino Lorber Studio Classics, a couple of years ago, gave us this. And this has the uh, original 162-minute uh, version, which was the way it was shown in America. I never realized, but Sergio Leone approved of that cut for America. He definitely approved that cut. This also has the Italian cut, which a lot of people called the director's cut for so many years. And that's over or just under three hours. So Kino Lorber tried to do the best they could on this, especially trying to reduce the yellow tint that happened. Still was a questionable transfer, but I'll take it, you know, I will take it. Um, I didn't think it was that bad, but it didn't get that many good reviews. But uh, let's face it, you're talking about a film that was shot widescreen and in a very strange process, which I'll get to. So Kino Lorber Studio Classics, uh, which has now gone back into the 4K ultra high definition Blu-ray market, which thank God, they are one of the boutiques now that are really starting to get into it. Criterion still hasn't. Uh, come on, Criterion, get on that. But here we go with this new 4K ultra high definition transfer of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Now, I'm sure people already know, this does not have HDR. So there's no HDR 10 or no Dolby Vision. This is standard dynamic range on 4K UHD, taking the 4K transfer, new 4K transfer from what I understand, of the 162 minute version of the film. Now, before I, I get into my thoughts on this, I know a lot of people have asked, why is there no HDR? Why is there no HDR? And granted, it was a 4K transfer. They possibly could have done a light pass at it, a very light pass. But the good, the bad, and the ugly, 
and I'm not going to cut to anything here. So there are videos on YouTube, but it was shot in a widescreen process called Technoscope. Now, just a brief history of it here. Technoscope was a process that was de developed by Technicolor in Italy for people to get a widescreen pro a widescreen image, widescreen two three five image without anamorphic lenses, without having to worry about the cumbersome anamorphic equipment. And also, it was less expensive than getting filming with Panavision lenses, real true anamorphic lenses. And the process involved a camera, be either an Aeroflex or a Mitchell, in this case an Aeroflex, being modified with a two perforation camera pull down. Now what does two perforation camera pull down mean? Well, two perforation two perforation camera pull down is two perforations. Standard 35 millimeter film is four perforations. Those things that are sprocket holes on uh, a, a film negative, standard 35 millimeter is four perforations. 65 millimeter or 70 millimeter is five perforations. But in this case, the camera is modified for two perforation pull down, so you're using half of a 35 millimeter film frame. And basically, what they would then do is take that camera negative, that two perforation camera negative, and take the frame, which is essentially a widescreen frame, or I think I'm pronouncing it, I think I'm saying it correctly, and make a four perforation anamorphic widescreen print from that two perforation camera negative. And Technicolor would do it with their famous dye transfer printing process. So it wasn't really a bad process until it got out of Technicolor's hands. But that, but because of that process, it's one step up from 16 millimeter in negative size. So when they would do the transfer to anamorphic for perf, which then just like with a Panavision film or a Cinemascope film, anamorphic, an anamorphic lens attached to the camera would then spread that out to the 235 aspect ratio. There would be an increased amount of grain. And sometimes in scenes with lower light levels, it, they could be pretty dark. So... Maybe they did tests with HDR and realized that because of the way it was filmed in the technoscope process, that HDR might not be good. But this looks great. This is the best this film has ever looked on home video. Be it going back to the Laserdisc days or the VHS days. I had a letterbox VHS, VHS tape of this back in the day. But this is the best the film has looked. And this is probably the best it's ever going to look on home video. Um, the sound, it says it's 5.1. My system reads 5.1 because I know they did do a 5.1 mix of this. But even though it says 5.1, it sounds like I'm getting the mono mix, which is perfectly fine. I'm starting to discover some gems going back to playing the original mixes when they're available on these discs. And it's great hearing if it is the mono and somehow it, it they, they have it as 5.1, which means there's four other active, there's four other active channels that are just not being used. So be it. I mean, it sounds great. And again, this is the best it's ever looked. So I encourage you to... Uh, to um, to pick this up when you can. Another word, everybody out there who's saying, oh, physical media for movies is dying. You guys all know that I've been through this with, with music and CDs. That's not even being talked about anymore. CDs seem to be here to stay uh, or uh, maybe in a limited quantity and, and, and vinyl is, is back and nobody's even talking about uh, the end of vinyl anymore, but physical media, as you've heard me talk over the last couple of years, is what's being talked about for movies. And it's dying, it's dying, nobody's buying, everybody wants to stream, everybody wants to stream. Well, if physical media is dead, why in the hell has Kino Lorber Studio Classics ran out of product? This is sold out. People were buying this faster than they could reproduce it. So they're like, people, please be patient. More are coming, so please be patient. So when more become available, 
If you go on Kino Lorber's site, which um, I had to do because Amazon was like, we don't know when we're getting it in. And then all of a sudden, we got it in. I can't deal with that anymore with Amazon. But I went to their site and got it directly from their site. So when it becomes available again, definitely pick it up. It's If you're a fan of this movie, it's definitely, definitely worth it. It's the best it has ever looked on home video. That is my take. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. And... I'll talk to you soon.